Hi there and welcome to the initial help tutorial video for St Kentigan's Academy in helping parents and carers access work through Microsoft Teams and working together collectively to support learning across the school. So, the first thing we need to do in order to access Microsoft Teams is to go on to Glow. Now, all pupils should have access to Glow, and if they have any issues in accessing it, if they contact a teacher or any member of staff, teachers have the capacity to change passwords and give out login details as well, so that learners can access Glow on the go whenever they need help or support. So if I go to my Glow page, Mine's will look slightly different because I'm a teacher. However, I go from here and I'm going to access Microsoft Teams from my launch pad. So when I click on this, it'll open up the browser version of Microsoft Teams. Now, because I have the teacher version, mine's will look very, very populated in comparison to the learners. However, they should have a team for each of their classes, and if that's not the case, then it's maybe a case of they haven't been added automatically, or they need a code to add themselves. So that's the first thing we're going to look at, really, in this video. Um, however, there's one other thing that I do need to indicate. Um, when we're dealing with Teams, now the browser version has certain functionality, but it does tend to have wee moments of temperamentality when you're accessing certain materials. Now what I recommend and what I actually use and what I'm going to use for the rest of this video is actually the desktop version of the app. So if they're accessing from a home computer or even a mobile device, they can actually go on through your browser and if you go to your profile picture up on the right here, it actually gives you the option of downloading the desktop app or downloading the mobile app as well. And when you do that, when it's on your computer, you simply log in using your Glow details as you normally would, and in doing so, you just increase that functionality and it makes it slightly better for managing uh, the use of Microsoft Teams for the learner as well. And the mobile app, obviously, is better for your iPads and your mobile phones and things like that, but I would recommend the desktop app. That's my kind of preference on that one, and I know the ICT technician recommend that as well. It's completely free to download as well, um, as is Microsoft Office when pupils have Glow, they actually get an Office version of Glow that they can uh, download for free and it saves you the subscription cost with Microsoft as well. Um, that's not in this video, but if you're interested, get in touch with the school and we'll tell you how to do that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimise my internet browser just now and I'm going to open up my desktop version. Now you can see there, it's the exact same layout. It's got all the same things, activity, chat, teams, assignments, calendar, any calls and things. And I've got all my tiles here as well for everything that I am in. Now, in order to join a team, it's quite easy actually. You click on the button up the top here. It says join or create team. Now, pupils won't have the ability to create, but they will have the ability to join. So if they join a team, you are wanting to join a team with a code. And if you enter the code here, now I got one of my staff to make one earlier for me. So my code is JKRBF6H. Now, all of the codes for all the teams have now been collated as well by the school. So if there is a team that a pupil can't get access to, the school can relay that information home. Now, if I then click join team, it should then take me straight to the team that I have now joined. Okay, now the team that I have now joined isn't overly populated um, purely because it's just been set up for demonstration purposes. However, on this, you can see there quite easily that I've been added into that team. I have access to any posts that have been made by the teacher any files that have been added by the teacher, my class notebook, and my assignments as well. And these are things that I am going to then talk about um, throughout this. Now, one of the things we are finding a lot as well is that when pupils are trying to get in touch with us, they aren't necessarily doing it in the best possible way. And that's why at times staff aren't always able to get back in touch straight away with answers for uh, the learners. Now, one of the reasons for that is Quite often, they'll go in and they'll type a, I don't know, like, can I ask about question one? Right, so they post that. Now, what you'll see there 
is that it's been posted, but there's no notification going to the teacher because if I was to go back to my Teams, obviously I have all of these. If it doesn't pop up on my activity here, I don't see it. Okay? So you need to actually make sure that if learners are contacting staff, they actually need to tag the member of staff in it as well. So if I was to go back to this post that I'm doing, if I then do at Miss Quinn, oops, um, so as I start to tag her there, I've got at Nicola. Oops. If I now tag Miss Quinn out and say I am stuck, what happens is this will automatically send a notification to Miss Quinn's activity feed. So she'll see that somebody has contacted her and be able to jump into that channel. It's purely a logistical thing in that with the number of teams we've got on the go, we can't be sitting on each one of them all the time. And that's it's as simple as that. But if we get a notification, it's very quick and easy to then click on that notification and we get taken straight to the person who needs us the most. Um, and that's uh, would be really, really handy um, for supporting learners, especially in this time of recovery. Um, the other thing that I was going to show you on this video as well, if I can go back to my team, I'll have to find that again. Um, when I go into the Teams, obviously any work that's been posted will be put up as a file. Now, because this is a new team, there's no files there. But what I did earlier was I actually looked at my science class. So this is now my class, and you can see here that every week I'm posting tasks from a class for anyone who's not in. So that's where they're posted. They're posted on the general channel. And it's very straightforward. It explains what's to be done. And if I go to my file section, which the kids all have access to, I can then see class materials. And we're on the Living Things topic now. So if I go into Living Things, here's all my PowerPoints. So if I refer back to one of these and say work on lesson one, it's sitting there for them. And if I go back again, Electricity was the previous topic, so if a learner wants to actually go back and revise something or look over something that maybe didn't go as well, then all of that material is there for them as well and it's kept there so that they can remediate their learning should they maybe come up against something they're not sure about or something that has been quite tricky in terms of the assessment and things. So there's always that scope for doing that wee bit extra, doing that bit of remediation and just really supporting the learning we know lockdown has had its impact on learning. We know that, and I don't think it's unrealistic to say it hasn't. We are now in the recovery phase. We want to support learners as much as we can. So by using Teams in this way, hopefully we can work together with parents and carers to then support learners to the best of our abilities and really get them to where they need to be to achieve success.